All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sideboard MTG. My name's Eric, and it's time for another of our last chance decks. This is Marionette Master. I've picked a Grixis list that I actually just found floating around on the uh, community decks. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play this Grixis list here. I have made a couple little tweaks to it, uh, but all in all, uh, looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, give it that thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, consider subscribing to the channel. Be more than welcome to be uh, part of the community. And uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this crazy deck. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Huh? Everybody having fun? Right? I'm, I'm sure sure everyone's you know ready for their day to wind down. Time to watch a little bit of magic, or maybe a little bit more magic. I see we got Jan here. I was just talking to Jan over on um, Dust Till Dawn Gaming's um, stream. He he just got through playing some mono green aggro, and uh, it was a lot of fun. He. Uh, we were we were talking about the the likelihood of the uh, mono blue wizards deck sticking around. I actually think that's um, quite feasible. That that deck looks very very good and doesn't seem to be uh, losing many of its parts. So you know I, that that could be a deck. That could definitely be a deck. It is strong now. So anyway, let me uh, let me get up chat here and then we'll talk a little bit about this deck and uh, we'll go from there. What's up, Rocker? K Dog, Steven Steele, Logical Order, um, and Jan and Madness. Oh, got Jizza up there. Um, Logic, just got done playing Mono Blue. Only four creatures in your deck. Uh, our Tempest Gin was fun. Wow, that's a different type of Mono Blue, man. Philip, a lot of people really like Marionette Master, and it was one of my uh, most requested decks to play people were uh, like you know last chance oh well, you've got to play marionette master so here we are man we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna rock out with this marionette master deck we're gonna have some fun and uh, hopefully all will go well I'm 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 confident that we can do some things here um, you know I did not build this mana base but it looks pretty well tuned um, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe it's not exactly where it needs to be, but the deck looks pretty good. Um, I want to say this is an old um, Jeff Hooligan Hogan deck. Um, some people don't like him. Some people like him. I think he's a uh, he's a pretty good Magic player. Um, very opinionated guy, but uh, he is um, definitely uh, definitely a good Magic player and uh, usually has some pretty cool decks to play around with. So. Um, the only changes I really made to the deck were I I wanted a Tezzeret Artifice Master in the deck, so uh, I made sure that's there, and then uh, I thought, you know, I want to play with the Scarab God as much as I can before he's gone, so uh, let's throw a copy of that in there too, right? Now that could or could not be the proper thing to do, considering um, Tezzeret the Schemer is probably just better with the Marionette Master plan because of the Ethereum tokens that you make work like treasures and you can sacrifice them to get the Marionette Master triggers. So um, let's talk about how you win with this deck. Um, other than just, you know, beat down with Thopters or, or things of that nature, um, the, the real plan here is to resolve a Marionette Master and fabricate the counters on it so that every time that you lose an artifact after that, um, the opponent's going to take four damage. Now, 
Um, if you read Marionette Master, it says, Whenever an artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. So if you can get a Marionette Master down, its power becomes four, then you can sacrifice Walking Ballista. You know, they you shoot them for a couple, plus, you know, they take four from the Walking Ballista dying. Uh, if you have some treasures laying around from uh, your treasure map or your Captain Lannery Storm, which... Nice little combo, by the way. You know, Treasure Map will will um, feed Captain Lannery Storm for a good swing. Or you can, you know, sack the treasures made by Captain Lannery Storm to the Treasure Map. Either one, they work really, really well together. And I expect that this is not the last we'll see of Treasure Map and Captain Lannery Storm playing together as they are both going to survive rotation. Now, uh, that is, that's one good way to do it. We have four copies of a braid because it works triple duty in this deck. Not only would you destroy an opponent's artifact, but you may destroy one of your own. And, you, of course, you know, dealing that three damage to a creature. Absolutely terrific, giving you a little bit of, you know, removal here in the main board as far as that goes. Along with, you know, cards like Fatal Push, which also very good removal. And then, uh, of course, uh, we get to run a very low land count. This deck's only running 23 lands, but because of the Renegade maps, you can use them if you need to, um, or if you can hang on to them because you're drawing plenty of lands, then you just uh, you can either thin the deck or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Figure out how to put Marionette Master in my Tishar deck. Um, I actually have tried uh, Marionette Master in uh, the Pia's Revolution, which was the... The grandfather to my Cheshire deck, um, so maybe. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that that's that's not out of the question. I don't think that you know there's any reason to do that in like modern or anything like that, um, which is where I expect my Tishar deck to to kind of rotate out to. Um, but um, the Tishar deck is. Uh, whether it's in standard or in modern, the the deck is starting to look stronger and stronger. Uh, for those of you wondering, in uh, in modern, I've actually ended up putting faithless looting in the deck so that I can throw um, you know scrap trawlers and things like that in the graveyard so that you know we can go off from there. So, um, Jora Jora would be uh, be good. Um, historic payoffs. So um, historic payoffs. There are a lot of historic um, spells here. I mean, we've got uh, of course. Are planeswalkers historic? Planeswalkers are historic, right? Creatures. Is it creatures and planeswalkers? Legendary creatures and planeswalkers, sagas and artifacts, or not planeswalkers? Planeswalkers may not be historic. Hmm. Sean, what's up, sir? Uh, where is Weaponcraft Enthusiast? Yeah, um, it's PNLR. We went with PL PNLR. So, um. But, you know, the, the deck's got not only uh, PNLR, but we've got cards like Maverick Thopterist. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, just because something is legendary doesn't make it historic, right? Like, doesn't that... Legendary permanence? Um, one second. You guys got me thinking now. Like, uh, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Okay, fair enough. Um, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So, oh, yeah, planeswalkers are 100% historic. Um, that's, it's good to know. Karn might have to end up in the deck. Um, yeah, I, I may just have to throw a Karn in there. Although, you know, Tezzeret's, uh, draw ability seems really good. I just don't like the five mana. But Karn, Karn could fit really, really well. Um... Legendary cards are historic. Yeah, I, I now have that. So let's take a look at this sideboard here. As uh, the, the main deck's pretty straightforward. We want to play some stuff. We want to, you know, get out there, make them try to deal with things. And then all of a sudden, you know, you slam down a uh, Marionette Master and just kind of combo finish kill them. Um, we've got, uh, we got some cool improvised spells uh, along with the... We've got Battle of the Bridge and in the main board we've got... Um, Maverick Thopterus, so we can make use out of those um, those treasures and stuff without even having to sacrifice them. Battle at the Bridge, absolutely terrific um, spell. Being able to to just tap a whole bunch of your artifacts and then you know gain life and do you know Neg X Neg X. This is a good way to kill Hazret and things like that. Um, Veraska's Contempt, good way to kill the Scarab God and Hazret and 
things like that. Um, I, I guess it. I guess I should always mention Ronus with these, right? Because you know, Mono Green is a real deck. So Battle at the Bridge and Roscoe's Contempt, you know, are ways to deal with those um, more um, defensive creatures, I guess you would say, or evasive creatures. We have a few copies of Duress here. Silent Gravestone for our um, anti-graveyard, um, you know, Graveyard Matters decks and things like that. Uh, cards in graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. And then, of course, you can pay for, tap it, and exile Silent Gravestone and all cards from all graveyards. Um, and then you get to draw a card. So Silent Gravestone is not that bad. And then, of course, um, Hope of Gyre Pier, because if you hit with it, you can sacrifice it. I thought that you could sacrifice it without actually having to hit, even though you wouldn't get the ability, but if you haven't hit with it, you can't actually sacrifice Hope of Gyre Pier. But uh, Hope of Gyre Pier is actually still pretty good if you need to you know, stop like them from playing a Teferi or something like that, buying yourselves just one more... Um, one more turn if you want to, you know, avoid them playing something like, um, you know, Fumigate or, or something like that. Maybe you know what's going on because you've looked at their hand with a duress or something. So, um, Hope of Gyre Pier is really, really good in certain situations, and that's why it's in the sideboard. Sorcerer's Spyglass, this is just another really good uh, way to answer, you know, certain um, activated abilities. You know, whether it be a Planeswalker or a Hazard or a Ronus or something like that. Sorcerer's Spyglass is, is really, really good. And then, of course, you know, Crook of Condemnation, just a little bit more graveyard hate because this deck does not like the Scarab God. Um, and mainly because the Scarab God can probably play with our deck a little bit better than we can. Uh, considering, you know, if you come up against like a, a blue-black control deck and they put they put a bunch of your stuff in the graveyard, they resolve with the Scarab God, and then they start bringing, you know, your PNLRs or your Maverick Thopterus back, and it buys them enough time that you'll never really get through there. And then they, uh, of course, you know, start bringing back your Marionette Masters, and then things get out of hand. So um, <clears throat> we have to have good answers for the Scarab God. Not only that, I want to run it myself because... If you bring Marionette Master back with the Scarab God, she's going to be a 4-4. Four four. You're going to be able to get that Fabricate trigger, and then um, you know you put those um, plus 1-1 one one counters on her, and then every artifact you sack, you only need to sack 3 artifacts to do 21 points of damage. So um, you know the Scarab God works really well there as well. Um, so that's the deck, guys. Hope you like it, and uh, let's, uh, let's, jump into, uh, let's, let's jump into some games, shall we? <clears throat> Madness says he's going to miss Ronus so much. Brightside, you have uh, more commander decks than one person needs, so he'll have plenty of usefulness post-rotation. Right, and I believe a lot of the gods are just going to become commander staples. I don't believe that they're just gone forever. You know, um, you still see cards like Kyranos um, and stuff like that. You know, they get some play in these commander decks, and um, I think that's going to be the same for the Scarab God, the Locust God, you know, stuff like that. Um, Hazard, he's going to show up in some and some red based um, some red based commander decks, stuff like that. So it, it should be a lot of fun. Absolutely, Steven Steele. Let's do this. <clears throat> oh, the Big Red Mountain. What's up, Big Red? Plus, the deck um, you put on the Reddit has Marionette Master in it as well. Okay. Um, so, we may play that this Sunday, uh, depending on um, how many votes it gets this week. So, guys, go over to the Reddit, check out the Reddit, and uh, give some votes if you want to. So, we don't really have a turn two. So, I want to turn one the map, which means I'm not going to be um, turn oneing the Fetid Pool. So, I'm probably just going to, like, Spire Bluff Canal play map. And then just kind of go from there. Um, the map will allow us to Maverick Thopterist on... Where am I? Well, I still have that. Um, the map will allow us to Maverick Thopterist on four. So that's a little bit better. If we can draw you know, another artifact or some other um, piece of action, then we can do something there. Like this thing. That's, that's absolutely perfect. So we'll go Spire of Industry... And then we'll treasure map. Now, next turn, we can play land, tap both treasure map and uh, renegade map, and get out our first Maverick Thopterist. So that should be uh, pretty decent for us. 
So yeah, I mean, we're we're still waiting on our opportunity to get this pool in, but right now everything's kind of lining up so that we don't really have to. So I'm gonna take a point of of damage here just to just to avoid. I'm gonna put that stop back in my upkeep. All right, well, we've got Maverick Thopterus. The opponent's not playing red, so we might be okay there. We'll see. Niv Mizzet. Oh. You just noticed that one of the two arts for the Is It Guild Gates has some interesting flavor text. Yesterday you did not recognize. Yesterday I did not recognize my own guild. Today I see why. And for tomorrow, I must be prepared. Yeah, the Is It Guild is kind of um, pulling itself uh, pulling itself from all angles. That's uh, that is definitely a, a thing that's that's going on right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tap the map. Yes, we could get down another Maverick Thopterist, but for now, I think I just want to. Yeah, we'll we'll do it this way. Marionette Master. We want to draw that? Maybe. Let's go ahead and put that on top of our library. It's one of the things we're definitely looking for. So we'll go ahead and draw that. I'll play this land. And I could just play another uh, Thopterist here. I mean, we can go uh, blue, red, tap, 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 play Thopterist, swing two. So let's swing let's swing for two here. There's a seal away. That's okay. That's okay. So we're gonna go blue red. Tap tap tap. Another Maverick Thopterist, and we'll pass the turn. So, next turn we're looking at... Uh, sweltering Suns. Gee, opponent. Alright, well, I'm definitely wanting to flip this now. So, I think I'll just keep using the Aether Hub for now. PNLR. We'll put that on top. That's perfect. So, I mean, I can at least cast that. So, we'll go ahead and draw our PNLR. We'll play the PNLR. <clears throat> and then we'll pass the turn. So, next turn we will have we will have some um, some artifacts, but I don't think it's exactly time to play the Marionette Master yet. Demanding Dragon. No, I'll take I'll take five. Um yeah, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna do this one more time. Sure, that's that's kind of what we're looking for there. Um Okay, so if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, then we only have one, two, um, we can, so we, we need to sacrifice five permanents, or five artifacts to be able to do this. So I think I wait one more turn, and then we can just like outright play it and just sacrifice the treasures. Yeah, I, I think that's where we go with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to wait one more turn, guys. And then we'll see if we can just, you know, finish him off. So, we don't even have to, um, you know, use the Ballista that way. We can just cast Ballista for zero or cast it off the treasures. Yeah, see, this is, this is kind of what I was thinking may or may not happen. Alright, well, 
we're gonna have one two three four five so it should be game we'll just go ahead and draw so we're gonna go marionette master Fabricate, plus one, one counters, green, green, white, go get a land, we'll get black. Like, I, I don't think it really matters here. Ballista for zero. And that's game! Unless you got two out of way to answer it. Bam! And that is Marinette Master. That's how that is done right there, boys. That is exactly how you do that. Yeah, searching for the land. None of that mattered. None of that mattered. We already had five. Like, there was there was a ton of lines, but like you guys always tell me, the line that kills them is the only one that really matters, right? So, uh, we could have, like, made three mana to cast PNR and all this other stuff. But, yeah, just the way we drew it up, right? Just the way we drew it up. Um, okay, so he's got Demanding Dragon. It's a red-white. Um... All right. Um, I don't think that graveyard shenanigans, so I'm not really interested in any of this. I don't think that uh, Sorcerer Spyglass is going to be terrific. Cast down's probably going to be just fine. Um, can probably trade a couple of braids for you know maybe I keep the braid. We trade a couple fatal push for cast down. Uh, because he's got like mainboard sweltering suns and things like that, I don't think that he's got um I don't think that he's got a lot of um you know early creatures, so I'm actually thinking that I might want some to rest, you know, to just make sure that he doesn't have certain control elements that would disrupt us. So I'm gonna find a way to put in these to rest, but I am bringing in the cast downs, so we'll just probably peel back on two of braids and just kind of go from there. Like uh, just bring downs and the rest cast down to kill the um, kill certain things so yeah red white monsters that seems what like what he's playing um yeah um the opponent the opponent asked me he said janking people out with master before it rotates out i'm like yeah buddy um, he said he feels the same way about Panharmonica, and I, I told him, yeah, I've got to try to play the Dagger deck before it rotates. Um, I'm going to be trying to play Dagger, or uh, I'm going to be trying to play um, Module Tron. I want to play those before they rotate. So, Magic Hefe? The man, the myth, the legend? Is he here? Magic Hefe? Long time no see, dude. What's up, sir? We were, I was actually wondering, like, what happened to good old Magic Hefe? I've, I've asked the, the community a few times, you know, just where did Hefe go? Um, man, this is, this looks like a great hand. It's just missing one key thing. Land. Oh, no! I don't think we can play this, guys. I think we're going to mulligan down to Oblivion. Oh, no! Not like this. We should have kept the last hand. Dagger Burn's freaking great. Well, I mean, we lost um, the Ferocidon, so, you know, that's... Um, oh, my God. I was reading the opponent, not chat. I was about to answer the opponent there. Um, <laughs> uh, all 
Alright, well, maybe we get a land. Ooh, we got a land. I still want to play our Canyon Slough first. This way, next turn, we can duress and see if we can pull something out of his hand that uh, might be horrible. Um... There's a Tezzeret. So he's got Demanding Dragon, Fire Song, and Sunseeker, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so we take the, uh, the Lightning Strike, play our land, and pass the turn. Um. Well, the opponent's got treasure map, treasure map. I mean, that was a pretty good top deck for the opponent. Just another treasure map. He'll be able to activate one of them here and start to roll on his treasure map. If we don't hit mana, then things, uh, you know, things might get a little bit bad for us. Um. All right, so come on, land off the top. You hope monocolored decks will still be viable? Oh, man, um, like we were just talking about that earlier, that I really, oh, man, that's great. That is so good. That monocolored decks are, are more than likely going to be viable. I'm just going to play this for one. Um Yeah, I, I think that they're going to be... I think there's still going to be some mono-colored decks viable. Um, I think there's going to be mono-red mono goblins that's probably going to still be fairly competitive. Um, I think the mono-blue wizards decks is going to be competitive. I think that there's going to be maybe not necessarily a mono-red wizards, but there might be a mono-red wizard burn deck still available. Um, see, this is good. If this, uh, if this artifact lives, then we get to cast Maverick Thopterus next turn. Probably shouldn't even turn this thing sideways, but we do know that he has Fire Song Sunspeaker and Demanding Dragon. We have seen the mountains. Here comes the Demanding Dragon. I don't. I don't necessarily need Pia, right? Like we don't need Pia right now, so I can get rid of Pia and save myself five points. There's a walking ballista. I think that I just want to get these Maverick Thopterists down. And then uh, we can go from there. One, two, three, four. So, I mean, we do need another land before we can play Tezzeret. Tormenting voice, discarding planes, drawing two cards. So we know he still has Fire Song, Sunspeaker. No swings. All right. Well, there is a land. Um, I think I'm just going to play the Tezzeret here. Is this will get me a way to to get a little bit more mana? 
And then, of course, if Tezzeret lives, we can start negging his, um, his, his dragon. Yeah. I like that. And then buy ourselves some time. I assume that he wants to get down the Firesong Sunspeaker at some point. Alright, so here's Firesong Sunspeaker, I assume. Oh, wow. Is this like... Is this like Star of Extinction? Nine mana? There's only six. Um, I'm scared. I'm scared. Fight with fire! Well, that's, um, that's horrible. That's just absolutely horrible. Blown out, blown out. <laughs> oh, goodness. And we get our marionette master so we know the last card in his hand is firesong sunspeaker um we cannot cast marionette master yet uh all right well so we will just maverick thopterist and swinging two here will be pretty decent. Um, swinging two means that that we get to um, now only have to sac we only have to sacrifice four uh, artifacts to be able to kill him. So that's that's pretty good for us. So he's gonna go treasure map. I assume that he still just plays Fire Song Sunspeaker here. Yep, Fire Song Sunspeaker. So now if he has any type of burn. Okay. Captain Lannery Storm. Well, again, we still can't play Marionette Master. So I'm going to play Captain Lannery Storm. And I think I've got a swing. Yeah, I think we have to swing. So we've got two ground blockers. Okay, that at least means we get to play Marionette Master next turn. Hmm. Uh, looks like we're looks like we just got a, a little too hurt on the mana. He's drawing cards. I mean, him finding um. And finding burn spell or burn spells is not going to be great because it's going to gain him a lot of life, and uh, that's not going to be very good for us at all. So he swings with the demanding dragon, I assume. Not going to be able to do anything about that right now. There's an abrade. Okay, so. Unfortunately, we've got to actually use these Ethereum cells and such because I think that I just have to get 
Marionette Master down, or we don't stand a chance. So we're going to put the counters on Marionette Master. And now we'll pass the turn. So I have to have a blocker next turn. So I'm just going to pass. And again, this is just going to give him even more time to draw cards. He can draw two more cards off these treasures. Um, Lincoln's got his party whistle. You know one of those little things you blow through it and you know, it, it makes that... Yeah, whatever. It's a party whistle. Anyway, he, is, he has been driving me crazy with that thing. Your LGS is full of spikes? Isn't... Aren't we your LGS? Like no one, no one plays it, plays there anymore. Party favors. More burn. Come on, don't don't draw burn. Just just draw all land opponent. Which this is going to be some type of just devastating thing. No. Ixalan's binding. I don't. I think we can win from here. I was kind of all in on the combo finish. So, yeah. We'll block. Yeah, I, w I was definitely kind of all in on the combo finish there. Spire Bluff Canal. Well, thank you so much, Spire Bluff. Like, that's that's terrific. Okay, well, at least we can kill the Demanding Dragon. So, I will just pass. And, I mean, we may, we may stand a chance. So we'll block. And then the opponent's got three cards in hand. I assume some of them, one of them is going to do something. All right, well, we're going to go for Killing Demanding Dragon here. We need to get him out of the skies. We no longer have an aerial blocker. So I'm not just going to give up here. That's not very promising. Seal away, that's not bad. So, the opponent's got, um... Did he have another Demanding Dragon? Great. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if we beat another Demanding Dragon. We need blockers! Blockers? Not a blocker. Well, we've got one more draw and we can cast most anything in the deck, so if we get if we get a blocker, then we might be alright. So we we can't block this. We'll go to one. He'll cast the Demanding Dragon. We'll sacrifice it to the Maverick Thopterus. We'll stay at one and we'll see one more card. Or we'll sacrifice the, um, the Thopterus to it. Sweltering Suns with a lifelink. Oh, man. All right. Well, that's a land, so... Okay, so the opponent is full of burn spells, board wipes, Firesong Sunspeaker. So it's a Firesong Sunspeaker deck. Um, so most of this isn't going to do much good. I think Veraska's Contempt is going to be pretty good here. So I'm going to use Veraska's Contempt. Um, Duress is probably still great. Thopterist is still terrific. Um, a Braid is not that great considering the only creatures I've seen so far. Battle doesn't seem bad. 
Um, I don't think we really need Battle at the Bridge, but the, the life gain could be very relevant. Um, I'm just going to bring in the, the Roska's Contempt. Um, right. Right. B battle was definitely on the consideration, but the Contempt's like the one thing that's going, we're probably going to need that. Um, I like this. So I, I'm keeping this hand. I, I like the um, I like the fact that we have lands. We know that we've only got 23 lands in the deck, so um, our likelihood of continuing to draw lands and flooding should be slim. So, oh man, see that? That, that means I can play the treasure map, but we're not going to actually have anything really going on like I can't really play PNLR if I want to scry and get this going which I do I really want to, to start scrying in my upkeep um, yeah I, I think I'm gonna just um, hold out on PNLR another turn and try to avoid you know hitting additional lands Um, yeah, it does. It means we didn't do a whole lot this turn, but Karn and Treasure Map also a nice little combo. I mean, Karn down ticks, and we start making you know four fours. So I mean, that's a thing. I, which I actually think next turn we go P and L R, and then the turn after that we go Karn. Start down ticking Karn. Um, there's another treasure map. I didn't even scry. Uh, maybe I Karn and down tick Karn. Yeah, he's probably going to destroy something here. So, I think that I can Karn. I think that he's looking for a second red source. So, I think that we can get away with playing Karn. And then at the end of turn, when he destroys one of my lands with his Field of Ruin, I think that we get away with... Um, um, do we down tick now? We'll have a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. I'm going to down tick now. We'll have 2-2. Two, two. And then at the end of turn, when he field ruins me, we'll be able to activate our treasure map. No, it's a lightning strike. Oh, brutal. Oh, that was not what I wanted to see. So now we need to protect this construct, if at all possible, which may not be possible. I highly expected him to... Shala, voice of plenty. I am going to go ahead activate this. We will... We're going to use our energy here. So we're going we're gonna to put that on the bottom. Draw a card. We'll go red source. Um, then we'll go... Maybe we go P in Alar? No, I, I think it's destroy Shala here. So yeah. I'm just gonna hit him. Oh man, then he could have a seal away. Well, I've gotta deal with that at some point anyway. So we'll swing. We'll go black, black, exile, Shala, hit him for two. And then, of course, you know, if he has Seal Away, then, then that'll be a thing. If he doesn't have Seal Away, we should be all right. Um, yeah, I, I should have I should have ticked up. Like, in hindsight, I didn't play around Lightning Strike at all. Um, ticking up would have would have definitely played around Lightning Strike. 
Um, taking down gives me a dude that will be fairly large next turn. Assuming that it doesn't just die right here. Lyra Dawnbringer. So I'm going to go ahead and scry. We can use the red source here. Dress to the bottom. Draw. There's a Marinette Master. We'll go land red PNR. Treasure map. And then we can swing. Swing six, right? So I assume that he wants to like start killing off some of these stopters and things like that. Um, I'm kind of willing to pitch a treasure to activate treasure map but I'm also not really wanting to do that yeah we're not gonna do that we're gonna play the marionette master and see if we can just kind of kind of go off so now I guess he's debating on whether or not he blocks or swings he swings One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So let's say we go black, undo. Let's go ahead and draw our card. There we go. All right. Now we're now we're. Cooking with jet fuel, boys. It's probably not a good idea. Don't cook. Don't cook with jet fuel. Use C4. Makes a great cup of coffee. Just heat it up on the end of your knife, right? Just don't stomp it out with your foot, okay? Um, and that's game. Yeah. Um, so the idea here was sack treasure, 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 swing for five, and uh, walking ballista. So yeah. Let's game. Attack first. I didn't want to attack first because I didn't want to. I didn't want the seal away to become a thing. Um, so the reason I didn't attack first is because I I wanted to to get as much going on as possible before he tried to play seal away, which is the one thing that I was kind of thinking of. Um, if he had a lightning strike, he would have just like burned Marinette Master or something like that. But. Um, Usually in the Marionette Master decks, you want all four Masters. If cooking something at 400 degrees takes one hour, then cooking it at 400,000 degrees should take only about 60 or six minutes. Okay. Okay. I, I don't. I don't know if chemistry works exactly like that, but yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, that I don't even want to get in. I don't even want to get into that. I mean, you have saturation levels. You have like cooking at four hundred thousand degrees would just instantly melt stuff. Oh man, like there's eh, so much. There's so many things wrong with that statement, madness. Like, what what kind of crucible do you have that you're that you're cooking something at four hundred thousand degrees? But I get I get where you're coming from. Yeah, that uh, that worked out all right. Um, oh goodness! Well, we can like turn two ballista, turn three ballista. Oh man, this is gonna be bad. But I mean, we we are holding like some of the key ingredients to making this work, uh, which is not exactly what you want to do. You normally want to like have all your setup cards and then start playing your your key ingredients 
right? It's, it's like cooking, right? Oh, a crucible of worlds. That's what crucible you have. Okay. It makes so much sense, Rocker. Right? Yeah, it, it, you're just cooking in a crucible of worlds, right? That's what, um, you know, crucible of worlds. Wouldn't that be like a, um, a nebula or something? I'm going to mulligan this hand. Even though it looked kind of sweet, I, I think that we kind of had to mulligan it. I, I, I just don't want to risk the two-lander. Uh, this might be alright. I'm going to keep that a braid. You guys crack me up. Maybe we should have played the Aether Hub so that we could Fatal Push on one. Um, we're reactive on two as well, so... Yep. I would have been able to just kill it. Just kill it dead. So, now I will play the Aether Hub. I'm going to miss this card in Standard. And I'm going to miss uh, Spire of Industry in Standard. Uh, the, there's some really good five color lands. Five color lands are often um, neglected. Like, people just don't think about how good they really are. So, yeah, I, I think we just maximize use of our mana there, kill with the abraid, and then uh, we'll pass the turn. We're setting up for Karn next turn, and then just kind of go from there. Um, if he drops his green belt rampager. So now is he thinking about things? There we go. So we'll shoot green belt. <clears throat> hey, he's got another green belt rampager. We were about to get rampaged. Rampaged. Rampaged? What how how would you say that? Scoop. Just just scoop. Just scoop. Alright. Uh. Okay, well. I think it's Karn time. I think we just uptick Karn as well. So a little uptick here. We'll see what the opponent wants to give us. Revealed Marionette Master and a Braid. He gives us a braid. Okay. So I assume Karn gets punched here. Some blockers out for him next turn. Wonder what the opponent's got here. Steel Leaf Champion. Well, that is not going to help us a whole lot. Oh, Tezzeret. So, do we get Marionette Master back? Play Tezzeret. Get Marionette Master back. Like, so we know we're losing Karn, right? We can't block Steel Leaf Champion with anything we have. Um, Maverick Thopterish only produces... A, he's a 2-2. Two, two, he produces two 1-1s. One, Karn... Um, Karn Token would be big enough to block Steel Leaf Champion if we play Maverick Thopterist. That could save our Karn maybe one more turn. I like it. I think it's Karn token. Play Maverick Thopterist. Have a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. We may just let Karn go anyway. So we're going to go red, blue, all these things. Make two dudes. Now we've got a 3-3, and we can block. 
if we let if we let Karn go in the following turn, we're gonna have um, Tetherit, which will produce an Ethereum cell, which will make this four power, and then from there. Karn, Karn. The real question is, do we just let Karn go? Um, I think that's a no. I think we block here to save Karn. We block here to save Karn. We keep our artifacts. Um, that that may or may not be the right play, but I, I don't know. Another Still Leaf Champion. Absolutely terrific. So, a braid, a braid. Well. If we down tick, we get Marionette Master. Play Tezzeret, make an Ethereum Cell. Following turn, we play Marionette Master, but then we don't have any like artifacts to block with. We're taking like no, he'll kill Tezzeret, right? Oh, the headache! I think we let Karn go. To get Marionette Master back. Because I don't think we have time to take this into a really long game. So, uh... Alright, so I'm just going to get Marionette Master back. I'm going to play Tez. I'm going to uptick Tez. Which, Tez will die. Because we can't block, which is just absolutely horrible. I mean, maybe I could have down-ticked Tez by two, and then he would have still died, but we would have been able to... But then we wouldn't have had the mana to play a, the Abraid, so... Um, get in for one? Because that's a thing, I guess? Yeah, I, I think mono green just kind of got us here. I know it's green black, but only in land. It's only green black in heart at heart. That's a Galta. Yeah, that's that's a Galta. At me, at me, at me. All right, well. PNLR. None of these things really work for us. Um, so if we play Marionette Master and Fabricate 3, we can down tick Tezzeret to make... We're so dead. So dead. Um, that's a death, death tie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're probably right, man. I, I am, I am looking to see if there is a way that we could get this kill off, um, or at least, like, we wouldn't even be able to block. I mean, we'd be able to kill one of them, but the Galta's trample will be like seriously relevant. No way about it. I, I there's 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 no way we live there. 
Uh, you'll be happy to see Torrential finally leave sick of that thing. But now there's a spell that's going to do it. Yeah, oh my goodness. There's a spell that's going to do it now. Um, okay, so Cast Down and Roska's Contempt over... Renegade map, and we just like take our chances on the land. PNLR doesn't seem that great here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it like this. Um, maybe battle at the bridge for Ronus. Maybe that's an idea. I don't know what we take out though. Like Captain Lannery Storm's probably bad. Like we should definitely probably try to be the control deck here. So we'll try that. I'm gonna leave in one cat form to feed the treasure maps or something, but uh yeah. Um Boulder Rocks. You still don't know what uh you're doing, but it's fun nonetheless. Uh a fat, beefy body that can eat a guy and also kill another guy with his chainsaw laser eyes. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Um, not having a 5-6 body attached to it is is pretty um, fair, I guess would be the way to put it. Like it's a, a fair Snapcaster Mage or a, like, I want this, but we need land. need land so I mean I, I have to kind of pitch that at, at least cast down is going to be good green belt I'm not going to get over excited with uh, my green belt or with green belt rampager this time if he wants to like play it out if he wants to do things he can I'm interested in playing walking ballista yeah, I'm interested in Ballista here because if we don't draw another land next turn, then we're just casting like Fatal Push or Cast Down anyway. So if he goes like land, green belt, green belt, and then um, like I'm kind of okay with that. Scrap Heap Scrounger. Maverick Thopterus. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to do it that way. There we go. And just kill the Scrape Scrounger. Gain a little life for it, that sort of thing. Um, just improvise, you know. Evening wallets. <laughs> What's up, guys? And I, I don't, I don't get the wallets comment, but hey, a land, isn't that so sweet? Um. I think we just pass and hold up cast down. Yeah, I'm just going to cast this down. Probably should have swung for one, but... Um, and the reason I cast down there is because he didn't have an opportunity to have like blossoming defense available. So I know that here soon he's gonna he's going to start like playing the green belt rampager, that sort of thing. So there's the green belt, right? And as long as we don't get hasty here.
green belt survives. Fatal push. All right. Land. That is a land. All right. So now we're now we're gonna try to. Um, Now we're gonna, we're gonna just you know play this Ma Maverick Thopterist out and pray that he's put out most of his big threats and that we can I think I just block this like the the artifacts are more important than the Thopterist is. Uh, plus, keeping his countdown for um, Galta and things like that seems like it's relevant. So, every chance we get to kill something, we probably should. Man, all the Haship Oasis and all the world. Just all of them. And we hit land. So, we're just going to play Walking Ballista for two. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot the Lana War Elf. We can't block, so I'm just going to go ahead and swing with the um, the two Thopters. Just get in for a little bit of damage. And again, shooting the Lana War Elf here means that, you know, he couldn't use it for mana, and if he, he will take an extra point of mana if... Or, if he wanted to cast something like Blossoming Defense. He's got one card left in hand. So at this point, we've kind of got to race this Steel Leaf Champion or whatever else he may come up with. Which is feasible. I mean, we could draw the cards needed to be able to race. So um, we'll use the Spire Bluff considering we've got all of our colors. I'm not expecting anything with flash, so we're just going to keep the race up here. I think I probably should have done that on my turn. Uh, just go ahead and put the counter on so we get the extra point of damage in. Um, there's Galta. There she be! That is 100% going to be a problem. So the only way I can see uh, to get through this is if we go walking ballista. Right, okay, so he sees it. He sees it. So we go walking ballista, uptick. Um, we block Galta, we'll be at one. Um, because we'll just use our mana next turn. What would we have drawn? A land? So we'd use a... Um, well, uptick walking ballista, right? And then uh, from there, we uh, we uptick him again the, the following turn. Um, yeah, I could have gotten one point of damage in. We, we would have missed one point of damage by me not doing it during my combat. So I was going to uptick the walking ballista here so that we could actually use it to block the Steel Leaf Champion next turn and they'll be, be able to deal three points of damage to the opponent. Um, we would be able to put the other single Walking Ballista in front of Galta. Swing with the two Thopters, of course. And the single Walking Ballista in front of um, Galta would have um, would have meant that like the Trample doesn't kill us, but yeah. Um, we, we had that by the skin of our teeth, right? How late are you? We are in match two, buddy. Match two. You are not very late at all, uh, Warlock Lightning. Welcome. Glad you can make it. Aiden, the uh, stream's going well, man. Uh, it's going really well. Um, we we lost to... Did we beat Firesong Sunspeaker? I can't remember. I think we beat it. Uh, um, and now we're in game three against uh, this could work this could work i am still worried about greenbelt rampager a braid does not line very well against greenbelt rampager 
uh, but we definitely want to we definitely want to be able to, to do some work against that thing. And I'm going to fatal push it. I am. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Push. Push it. Push it real good. Um, oh, he could have pumped with his oasis. You're right. Then that is a punt on his part. He shouldn't have scooped. He scooped too early. So, if he plays creature, cruise heart. So, I'm actually going to abrade the heart right now. Because if it's not a creature, then he can't actually blossoming defense it. So that's that's why I chose to abrade the heart right there in that that instance. Um, Spire of Industry. Walking Ballista. I mean, just being able to deal with Heart of Kirin and um, Land of War Elf. The opponent not having the Steel Leaf Champion out yet. And we can take a couple beats from the Greenbelt Rampager. Maybe even get to this Karn next turn. I mean, we could actually get Maverick Thopterus next turn. There's the Steel Leaf Champion. I wonder why he didn't play that last turn. Um, we can play the Dragon Skull. I don't want to play Karn now. So I'm going to go red, blue... And we'll just play the Maverick Thopterist. This way, at least Karn Downtick makes a Steel Leaf Champion blocker. We do have to take a little bit of damage here, though. I think I think we just have to take our beats. Just have to take our beats right now. And this is a little bit scary. I'm not gonna lie. So, Karn. Down tick Karn. We've now got a 4 4, which block, profitably blocks Steel Leaf Champion. Well, not profitably, but uh, kill Steel Leaf Champion, which is kind of where we want to go with this. At me, at me, at me. Um. So. How much of this can we take? Probably none. Probably absolutely none of this. Well, I'll try to just take the the three because like double blossoming defense, which is what I'm trying to play around, like blossoming defense, blossoming defense. Um, that will... Yep, that'll be a thing. That will be a thing. So now we're looking at down taking Karn yet again. So he brings back Scrap Heap, which we kind of figured that would happen. Oh, Maverick Thopterist. Okay, so. 
We'll down tick Karn. Play Thopterist. I think that I'm supposed to tap Walking Ballista here. Just so that I can play the other Walking Ballista? And now I think we just kind of pass. So, I mean, that's... Uh, that's a thing. I mean, we, we've we got this 7-7 seven, seven construct just kind of chilling here. Alright, well, I mean, here's the Green Belt Rampagers. Green Belt. And Green Belt. Wonder what the last card in his hand is. No attacks. Okay. Um, so now we actually get to start playing Karn. We'll see the two cards we reveal are Karn and Treasure Map. So I'm going to play Land 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we don't actually have enough to um, multiple upticks on um, Walking Ballista. But we do have enough to play Treasure Map and activate Treasure Map this turn and uptick Walking Ballista. So, not a horrible turn of events here. I don't think the opponent comes out extremely profitable on attacks. Although, we have got to, we've got to kind of dig our way to something here. That is a Galta. Show me a Veraska's Contempt. Show me. That is an Abrade. What does Abrade do here? We'll put it on the bottom. So I, I think the opponent's kind of just... He's going to wait one more turn. Uh, we're going to go ahead in the end step. And uptick a ballista. That's pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. That is pretty good. So we go. I upkeep. I think I put it on top. Play Thopterus. Let's go red. Sorry. I can't tap mana. Red, blue, and then we'll go one. I think I just tapped the, the Walking Ballista here. And as much as I'm not extremely excited about this, I'm going to down tick Karn and make another 10-10, uh, which will make them 11-11s. So he's got one, two, and he scoops! That's right. That's right. We scared of you, Galta. Get out of here. Get out of here. Woo. Oh my goodness. What a game. What a game. Uh, I've got to look over at chat. I know you guys are you guys are uh, probably going uh, going crazy. Bye bye Chandra. You're right. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, Chandra. I'm going to miss Chandra, but I don't think she's gone. I mean, she's a four ability planeswalker. All four abilities are extremely relevant. 
Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think that she's good. Madness says, um, you guys are talking about, well, there's Demanding Dragon, but there are some key differences, of course. Um, you I uh, thought it was for anyway. I uh, agree that stronger dragons deck uh, will be the five color with Palladia. Palladia Moors, really. Um, I think Lathless is definitely important. Um, yeah, I, I, ag I agree with you, Boros, that Lathless is very important. Palladia is a thing, but I just don't think those decks need it. I, I'm, um, I think Grixis is going to be your your dragons deck. I think it's going to be Grixis dragons, you know, Bolus dragons. Um, I think you're going to be doing Bolus dragons. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe you've got some ways to to play those other dragons, thanks to Sarkin and things like that. So maybe it is it is going to be five colors, but um, demanding dragon is nifty, but nowhere near as profitable as Glory B. I agree with that a hundred percent. Lathless is the finisher for dragons. Uh, it's basically a different kind of demanding dragon because it demands to be dealt with or um, it gets out of control just like Resplendent Angel. Absolutely. Resplendent Angel does some serious uh, serious work. So, um, Van Victus exists. This is true. Um, Derogaz, so he's okay. Um, I actually kind of like Van Victus. Van Victus is the one that, you know, you get to like get rid of your worst thing for the next permanent off the top of your library and you get rid of their best thing for the next permanent right uh check out the last chance deck on on reddit shameless plug yeah speaking of shameless plug um since we're in between matches here if you guys want to play this deck or any other deck if there's some cards that you guys want to play with that you just don't want to go purchase the cards now because they're rotating out or maybe you're one of those people that has already sold all of their cards and uh, you don't have the cards to kind of play with certain decks anymore. Um, check out Mana Traders. Link is in the description box below. And if you use our coupon code, you will save 15% on your first three months. Mana Traders. Play with all the cards. All the magic. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Shameless plug. Get in there. Use the coupon code. Use the link in the description box below. Play all the magic. All the magic. Speaking of which, let's go play some magic right now. Hey, like my sh my shameless plug there, Boros. Ah. Uh. I um. I like this Marionette Master deck. It's um so so far, <laughs> it's been interesting. It's definitely been interesting. Um, the opponent scooped when he shouldn't have, and we shouldn't have won that last game. Um, but. This is okay. This is just an okay hand, not the greatest hand, but it's an okay hand. If we play the island first, we can just play Drowned Catacombs on two. Macaroni three. Let's go ahead and get this out now. Hopefully we'll be able to kind of make our way to um, to some point where we can start tapping our our um, like so we just need five five to be able to do this, right? I'm interested in doing this at the end of turn anyway. Merfolk Trickster. If he's just trying to go for value here, I'm just going to kill it. And then... Renegade Map? Hey, let's put that on top. And then we'll just draw the Renegade map. If you want to counter Renegade map, he can, but I somehow doubt that he will. And then maybe we'll just catch him on a, a turn where he tries to play some aggressive things, and, and we just kind of go ham. Chart, of course. He hit another land. 
a braid a braid to the bottom and since I put that on the bottom I will I will use this in upkeep now we'll go ahead I just put that on the bottom if I draw this a braid my goodness So we'll play this land and just cycle this one. I want to find a turn where our opponent just kind of taps out and we just kill him. Like, I think that's the, the best thing we can possibly do. Tempest Gin. So do we get retorted when we go to play the... I think we can take another turn or two. Oh no, I tapped my red mana. I did that, didn't I? One, two, three, four, five. Dang, I, I straight up tapped my red mana. Yeah, I did. I'm going to go ahead and... We've only got two mountains in the deck. What am I thinking? Oh, my goodness. Boy, let's, let's just compound the mistakes, right? Would have been better off just sacrificing a single treasure. Compound mistakes. Um, How much time do we have? Right? Punt after well, that's that's what happens. You just like when you get into one, then you just compound more. Uh, if I would have played with the deck more, I would have definitely known that. Um, I would have known the two mountains is all we're gonna get. So now I think we just never resolve anything, which seems bad. Sure, we'll keep the land. Like, I'm so worried about a wizard's retort here. Shard, of course. This is not a wizard, but, I mean, he can still... He can still use it. One, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four, five, six. So do we really need this? I don't think so. Okay. And then I use the blue mana. So that means I can't Maverick Thopterist. So we're going to go tap. Tap, tap, and we'll play Maverick Thopterist. I'm sure he tries to counter this. He did not. Um, here, I'm just going to actually sacrifice this for blue. We'll play the other Maverick Thopterist, and now we've got... We've got some blockers. There's the wizard's retort. We knew that that was that was around there somewhere. We were trying to trying to dig that out of our opponent's hand. He's going to unsummon a flyer. If he doesn't have another counter, we should be okay. If he's got another counter, though, we're we're just done for. If he's got another unsummon, we're kind of done for. So, maybe we just play PNLR? Uh, we'll put that on the bottom. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna play PNR. And I left up the mana in case we were like, well, we're not drawing a card, so. Goodness gracious. We can swing with this. Um... Unsummon. All right, so he's getting... He did have another unsummon, so I'm glad I didn't play the Marionette Master. He's got nine. He's got three cards left in hand. Four cards now. I, get, I guess we're to the point now where we just play it, right? I mean, we can Maverick Thopterus... One, two, three, four, five, six. Maverick Thopterus, try to buy a little time. So he doesn't have a counter there. Alright, I think he could counter the Maverick Thopterus if he could. So I'm just going to slam down Marionette Master. I'm going to go counters on Marionette Master. Swing. And then uh, we'll pass. So now what happens? He scoops. All right. Um, that was a little hard to navigate around. And I made some punts in the middle of that. But yeah. Yeah. Woo. I guess I'll just die then. Um, <laughs> all right. We did not. We, we ended up making it through that madness, okay? Like, the madness is... Uh, or we can do this, right? Right? Woo! What a thing. 100% um, want the cast downs again. So maybe cast down just needs to be main board. Um, a braid's going to deal with most of, the, most of his deck. What's up, Lincoln? Hey, buddy. Yeah, a braid will deal with most of his deck. He could be the gen only version of the deck. Uh, because he's probably got a lot of flyers, I don't think Captain Lannery Storm... Lincoln! Dude! What are you doing? <laughs> hey, baby! What's up? Uh, one minute, guys. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> anyway. All right, so... I don't know if Roska's Contempt's exactly where we want to be. Probably is. I don't think we need Battle at the Bridge. Um, we, just, we do need to be able to kill the... I'm getting rid of one map. And we, uh, we just peeled back on Captain Lannery Storm. We brought in Cast Down for Roska's Contempt. I think that's kind of all we really need. Um, Tezzeret seems like he's going to be at... Well, the mono blue Tezzeret's going to be really good here. He produces flyers, that sort of thing. So I'm not taking him out. This is a no-do-anything hand. And it's probably a little too fast. Uh, I mean, we can turn two, start cycling. But... That's that doesn't sound that great considering like we have to play this or our spire bluff canals turns one two and three um, and then turn four play island turn five get our first mountain or our first swamp I, I don't really like the hand so I'm gonna mulligan the hand and then this is not that great either um, at least we can turn one renegade map sacrifice renegade map. Um, yeah, on the draw, I think this is good, especially with a scry. I th I'm about 90% sure I have to scry anything to the bottom, though, that's not a land, though. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah. Taste the rainbow. Um, that's basically what it was, yeah. 
So we're just going to go Spire Bluff, Renegade Map. Come on, land. That's a PNR. All right, well, I mean, if we can get to some lands, this may be okay. I am not going to sacrifice the Renegade Map before my draw step because I want to keep um, the, the sheer volume of um, lands in my deck as high as possible until after my draw step. So um, that's something you guys could think about. Like if you were in a situation where you had more lands than you want, sacrificing the Renegade map in your upkeep would would um, would thin the deck of lands. But I think here we just want to um, keep the volume of like technically thinning is a little bit better because we know that there's a non-land on the bottom. And um, if we just go ahead and draw, we have a better chance at drawing a land. So it was not a land was not a land so we'll go ahead and sacrifice this get a red source and i think that that red source is just 100 percent necessary here uh, because i want to abrade this slither blade while he's tapped out like uh i just i just don't want him to continue putting you know curious obsessions or even you know continue drawing cards with you know, with that so um yeah he scooped it up that was his hope and prayer right there that was it. Oh my goodness, no land. That Slither Blade was his answer. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he needed to he needed to draw lands off Slither Blade and um and that was that was it. That was it. Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. And that's game. <laughs> oh. Well. But I have the same no land hand. Right. I could have revealed my hand. Well, I ain't got no land either. I mean, at least next turn I was going to play treasure map and then start, you know, looking for land. But looking for land in all the wrong places. Yeah. That's how it works. All right, guys. Um, that closed out. So, what did you guys think of Grixis Marionette Master? I, I know the, the last game got cut a little bit short there, but um, we did pretty good fighting that Tempest Gen, right? Like, we had to work our way around a tricky little situation, play around some, some outs of the opponent, had to kind of come back from a compounded punt. Um, you know, and that's that's one of the things, you know, that I, I try to talk about not doing. Um, you know, uh, if we listen to the, the all-great Reed Duke, he always says don't compound your, your mistakes when you make mistakes. And I try not to do that, and sometimes, you know, go ahead and you compound your mistakes. So um, if you make punts, you know, always kind of back up from it and go, okay, all right, well, that's done. I can't come back from that. That's done. So, um, yeah, um, that's... That's kind of uh, that's kind of that's kind of the takeaway here is if you look and you really consider you know what can and can't be done you won't compound your mistakes and you can still kind of you know recover from those um, and don't do what I did and I compounded my mistake once and then from there we ended up playing the way we were supposed to and and get that uh, get everything back on track we ended up winning our games. So, um, all in all, the deck was a lot of fun and apparently competitive. Uh, so, I mean, we know the what Mono Blue Wizards deck is actually pretty competitive right now. Um, we know that the Mono Green deck that we played is competitive. Um, I forget what the first deck we played. It, it comboed off so quick that I, I don't really remember. Um, so, yeah. All in all, it was a ton of fun. Um, Magic Hefe, you don't know the meta and you haven't had uh, any any patreon decks can you upgrade the flashing miners deck for one last party before rotation 100 percent magic cafe you send me a list um and or if you would like me to play around with the um the flashing miners deck or whatever i will be more than happy to play flashing miners for you for a last chance deck sir absolutely that's i'm actually glad that you mentioned flashing miners i really really like that deck and I think that deck um, 
had some merit to it. Um, plus, you know, there's a lot of people actually not playing um, Goblin Chain Whirler. Um, like one of our opponents said tonight, people are um, people are kind of playing around with like nostalgic decks this last week, and and that's kind of what I'm wanting to do for you guys. You know, we're we're playing those last chance, uh, you know, before they rotate, sort of things. You know, I'm sure at some point some of you have had pet decks that you uh, you have had a lot of fun with. Well, Magic Cafe, I assume that you're trying to kind of get back into Magic, so I'm going to say welcome back to the party. Um, I know that you have maintained your Patreon the, the whole time, so, you know, so much love for you for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so, absolutely, welcome back to Magic. We're about to have a wild ride coming up. Um, you know, we've got, uh, we've got so many rotating out. We've got, um, you know, some new formats coming in. A lot of these decks, I think, are going to be fairly cheap because there's going to be so many tribal decks. But there are going to be some expensive decks. Like, if you want to build Grixis Dragon and things like that, you're going to spend a little bit more money into it. But if you um, if you want to just stay cheap, you want to build, you know, a Goblin stack or something like that so you can get in it, I think that some of these, these um, tribal decks are going to be very competitive. So it's probably a really good time for... Um, for you know for those to come back madness you are not the only one man i absolutely love doing the challenger series um i think it was the first person on youtube to go ahead and play all the challenger series i played them all in a league and we three twoed every one of them uh which was great like right out of the box just three two a competitive standard league um that was that was a ton of fun um so i really do like the uh the challenger decks and things like that so as soon as uh, if they do come out with more challenger decks I'm looking forward to playing those, um, but yeah, um, all in all, I really enjoyed this Marionette Master list, so it was great to play with Marionette Master one last time here. Uh, we get to go, you know, man, that deck really was powerful, wasn't it? You know, it was just one of those things that could really do something, so. Have I seen Selective Share? It's a Tribal Bounce Hate card. Oh my goodness, Selective Snare? I, I said Share, but Snare? Um, I do not. Uh, could you could you give me a, a rundown of what that card is? It's a tribal bounce hate card. Bounce target creature and all creatures that care that share a um, creature type with that, because that would be pretty broken. Like, how much mana is that thing? If it's two, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Um, but yeah. Um. What are we going to do for late night? Um, am I doing late night tonight? Like As I said, uh, late night. I want to do late night. Um, probably not going to stay up to 2 o'clock in the morning like I have been the, the last couple nights. Uh, we'll try to get that uh, kicked off by midnight tonight. Um, yeah, I said share, but it's snare. My bad. Selective share. That's where you go and you select the body parts you want to replace. That's selective share, right? Um, it, man, I'm, I'm going to get hated on by some share fans. Um, are there share fans? Or are they all too old and dead? Okay, okay, I'll quit. I'll quit. I'll quit. I'll quit. Um, Sonny Bono seeing horses and hitting some trees. Oh, man. Return X target creatures of the creature type of your choice to their owner's hand. Oh my goodness. It says you can bounce that many cards of a chosen creature type. Oh my goodness. Do you believe in luck? <laughs> Alright. Alright guys. Um, what are we doing for late night tonight? We may be going over spoilers. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to pull up the spoiler list. We're just going to kind of go through all the rares, go through. We're just going to talk about things. So if you want to hop in chat and you've got a particular spoiler you want to talk about, um, meet me for a late night tonight. If you're still awake, um, we will um, we'll just pull up the spoilers on Mythic Spoilers. And uh, you did watch the Sunny and Cher show when it was on TV. Um, you still, you know, I remember Sunny and Cher on TV. Okay. I remember the Sonny and Cher show because I had three channels growing up, boys. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, three channels. That's what we had. We had Channel 3, Channel 9, and Channel 13, which was public TV. PBS, baby. Reading Rainbow. Let's do this. Um, it'll be midnight tonight, Central Time. Um, we'll be going over that tomorrow. I do have to say this. For tomorrow... We will not be playing any deck whatsoever. Um, I'm going to be playing the Mormir. 
uh, late night birthday stream, right? Uh, we're going to be playing more mirror on MTG Arena. I think it's a great little format. I've got some, you know, some numbers pulled up for you guys so that you can, we can just put that over to the side and be like, okay, look, if we do a five drop, you know, these are the cards that we have. So we got, you know, the odds here and things like that. So you guys will be able to see that stuff. So I'm working on uh, doing more mirror. Uh, Momir, Mormir, Momir, whatever. I don't know if there's an R in there or not, but we're going to be doing Momir uh, for my birthday tomorrow night. So no deck. I'm not building a deck, not pulling up a deck, any of that. We're just going to play some uh, MTG Arena Standard Momir. I think it's Momir. God, it should be Mo. I hope it's Momir. Anyway, so Standard Momir, um, which for those of you that don't know how that works, uh, you have a deck of 60 lands, and then uh, you can... you play a land every turn then you can tap x amount of mana discard a card from your hand which will be a land of course and get a and get a card or a creature a random creature of that converted mana cost so um well everyone just like the only look check this out right if you go this is one of the things that i thought was just absolutely funny like everyone gets zakama because Zakama is like the boss in Momir. And I, I will talk about all of this tomorrow when we actually start playing this. But how many 9 drops? Oh, that's the goal. That's the goal is to hit a Bells and Lock, right? We want to hit Bells and Lock because it just instantly kills you, right? We're going to consider that the true victory if we hit the Bells and Lock and just instant die. Um, but yeah, why? come on Magic Online. Come on. Don't freeze on me now. Everything was going so well. Oh. What? Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about this a little bit more. Here we go. There we go. If we go type creature, and then we got to wait on it to load all those. Come on, Magic. You got this, Magic. You can do it. I got faith in you. Uh, but yeah, you uh, you tap X amount of mana, discard a card from your hand, and then at that point, you can get a creature of that converted mana, of X converted mana cost. And it'll be a random creature. You'll have uh, no clue what you're actually going to pull. So if we go to converted mana cost, and we go to 9, check out how many creatures in standard are converted mana cost nine right so this is kind of the kind of the big deal like you just you hit Zakama everybody gets Zakama you get to nine you get a Zakama 100% of the time you get a Zakama so Zakama is like the final boss in standard Momir right now or Mormir right now so uh, either way it'll be a lot of fun I think you guys are gonna like it it's gonna be some arena footage so if you guys you know want to see some arena um, you know you can there's one one creature at nine and then if we go to eight uh, I think like all of a sudden just jumps to quite a few more, but I'm going to have all of these odds pulled up here um, on the side for you guys. Uh, so, you know, we'll have a, a 1 in 11 uh, chance at getting one of these creatures from, uh, if we can, if we pay for 8, we've got a 1 in 11 chance of getting one of the creatures you see before you here. If we pay 9, we've got a, you know, 100% chance of hitting, um, hitting that. Uh, yes, if we could finally hit like 12, but the thing is, is you're never going to really get to, um, get to Galta because you would have to skip so many early turns to do it. So, um, it's been a while since I've played Momir or Mormir and, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and, um, we've got the open beta. You remember I said like, uh, Marina was already an open beta. Yeah. Well, I was wrong. Everybody made, made sure that I knew it, but, uh, the open beta for arena starts September 27th. Um, which is a friend of mine's birthday as well. So anyway, um, that, that doesn't that doesn't matter. I'm just thinking of birthdays right now. But um, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna be fat on German chocolate cake tomorrow, um, or German chocolate uh, cupcakes. Vanessa went and got my got my stuff for cupcakes today, or Val, as most of you guys know her. Got my stuff for my German cop chocolate cupcakes. I'm so excited. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have some cupcakes and we're gonna play some Momir and we're gonna hang out, have fun. Should be a great time. Um, I'm gonna go offline for about 
about um, about an hour. We'll be back at midnight Central Time, and we're going to uh, we're going to play. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about spoilers. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about spoilers tonight, and then we're going to go from that. Uh, yeah, chocolate and coconut. Heck yes, and she makes her icing homemade. She, homemade. Everything's homemade. Oh my goodness. Oh, she looked at me and she goes, I almost cheated and bought your icing. And she was like, I'm not going to do you like that. And uh, yeah, I love that woman. I do. I'm telling you, I love her. She's so, she's perfect. Anyway, honey bun cake or strawberry cake is your birthday jam. See, everybody's got that, that one thing. I get one good German chocolate cake a year. And, uh, well, this year they're going to be cupcakes. But, you know, that's still a cake. I'm excited. But, yeah. Um, it's going to be great. Guys, we'll see you in about an hour. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you had fun. See you next time.